They're rats. Furry, some might even say cute, one of 4,000 different types of rodents in the world. Rats have been on the big screen, been blamed for the Black Plague. Some rats need humans to survive. Trouble is, we don't need them. They do a tremendous amount of property damage. So you may hear something that sounds like a scratching or a clawing sound in the wall or up in the attic. I don't think anybody that I know wants it on their epitaph killed by a rat. Hello, I'm Michael Russo. It seems like rats have been around forever. I mean, even the old Chinese calendar has a year of the rat. But that's about the only celebrating most people ever want to do with these rodents. Sure, they can look kind of cute sometimes, but they're also dirty, disgusting, and downright dangerous. They're things you don't want to have crawling around your home. This video will show you what you can do to help keep rats out, and also what the County of San Diego can do to help. Rat biology may not be your cup of tea, but for the county's Michael Johnson, he's in his element. A native rat, which we call more commonly the pack rat or the wood rat, which is this one right here. This guy is usually okay, shy, more likely to stay in a field somewhere. He's not really what you would call an indoor pest, he's more of an outdoor pest. You'll find him in fields, maybe in orchards, things of that nature. Our native rat, not such a big deal. These guys are a big deal. The Norway rat, commonly called the sewer rat, and especially this one, the roof rat. Roof rats, which are the imported rat, you'll find him going up in the trees looking for food, looking for shelter. Also, you'll find them crawling up into buildings. It's a much more commensal parasite. It's much more used to living with people. So it comes into our homes if it can. Rats and mice no are not the same. Tail. Rats are bigger. The roof rat also has a very long tail, usually as long as the rat's head and body combined. Both rats and mice are nocturnal. They both build nests, but they behave differently. Mice will stay near a food source, usually within 15 to 20 feet of it. So if mice get into the kitchen, they find food, they're gonna stay somewhere in that kitchen. They may go behind your appliances. They may find a little spot underneath the cabinets, but they'll stay relatively within that area. A roof rat, the way he behaves is he still likes to climb. He thinks he's climbing something. So he may crawl literally into the crawl space under a house first, work his way up the side of a wall and come out and live in the attic, but then he'll come out and go back to where his food source is. That could be anywhere from say 100 to maybe 300 feet away. So it's a difference that the roof rat is a traveler. He will be much more willing to go literally all over a house looking for food, looking for shelter. He's not gonna just stay in one spot. And the best way to figure out if there's a rodent in the house, look for droppings. If you find very small droppings, approximately one eighth to maybe a quarter inch long, kind of look like a piece of burnt rice. That's typically your average mouse dropping. Now a much larger dropping, half inch long, usually pointed ends, sometimes bent in the middle, that will be your typical roof rat dropping. That gives you an idea of what animal got into your home. But if you don't see droppings right away, use your ears. You may hear a gnawing or a chewing sound, especially with the rat, because he will be chewing on things to keep his teeth worn down because his teeth constantly are growing. So you may hear something that sounds like a scratching or a clawing sound in the wall or up in the attic. In fact, a lot of calls that I personally receive are people saying they're hearing loud noises in their attic because the rat is crawling underneath the insulation. He's bouncing around on the wood. After that, it's time to bounce them out of your home or business. Okay, we know what a rat is, we know they're bad, we know they can carry disease and do a lot of damage. But if you don't see them or you don't hear them around your home, how do you know you actually have them? Well, this is where the County of San Diego can really help. On a sunny day in Vista, the rat man cometh. Rats are a creature of habit. When it comes to rats, Chris Rodeo says the cats meow. I think this is a rat killer right here. <laughs> Normally they're within 50 feet of food, water, and shelter. And it doesn't matter where you live or what your home looks like. We go into places like Fairbanks Ranch, um, La Jolla, uh, Del Mar. There's an abundance of rats. Dra rats are due to food availability and shelter. This house is not really trashy. It's very well maintained, basically, except for the openings that are allowing the rats to get inside. The openings, Chris's specialty, helping you find where rats are setting up shop. 
and he does that with a simple walk around the home. What I'm doing is evaluating the house to find the structural deficiencies so that they can be sealed so that it's easier to catch the rats. In order to solve the problem, you have to seal the openings and then trap only what's inside because then no more can get inside. All six of these screens are intact. They don't need to be repaired. The rats can't get in these. But the news is not good elsewhere at this one-story stucco house. Very typical. Things get overlooked by residents, but rarely overlooked by Chris. Pull back a juniper next to the garage. You see the grease marks on the wall? That's the rat going right up the wall. And it looks like he's eating not only the molding, but some of the glass to gain entry to the garage. Then Chris takes a few steps back to get a better look at the roof. The next thing I would look at would be the roof overlap. And the roof overlap is right there. He uses a small telescoping mirror to get a better view using reflected sunlight. And you see how there's a dark mark there? That's the body of the rat, just like it is on the window, going in around that flashing. That brown mark or grease mark happens because rats don't usually clean themselves like a cat or dog would. Their fur rubs up against the surface and makes a mark. On the garage door, another hole. He needs only the circumference of a quarter. The only bones for say are in his skull. The rest is like cartilage. So once he gets his head through, the body just follows. This opening is big enough for him to get in. And keeping rats from getting in is the key. That's called exclusion. If you don't find out how they're getting in and you eliminate what's there, any new ones coming to the area pick up the urine scent and this is how they reinfest, especially if you don't do exclusion. That's the most important thing about rats is to seal the openings as how they're getting in the house.